Hello and welcome to the Reef VCS uh, Centre located in Townsville, North Queensland. My name's Rob Webber and I'm a Vessel Traffic Services Operator within the centre. And today we're going to give you an overview of how the centre operates and in particular some pointers and tips for pilots and uh, we'll see how we go. The centre comprises of six operator consoles and currently we use two of those, one for port VTS and one for reef VTS. The centre has a number of uh, wall consoles which include CCTV, a surface picture and a radar. The operators have a number of monitors that they use. This includes the traffic information module which has a surface picture and a forms and reports, the radar picture, the C4I communications console and a corporate network. The surface picture includes standard raster charts which we can manipulate for the task at hand. The standard routes are shown on these charts and ships are indicated by standard IALA symbols. We can choose any vessel by just simply clicking on the symbol and further information is indicated in this dialog box. The reef VTS area is defined in the user guide as per the AMSA marine order. The four main pilotage areas include the Torres Strait pilotage area, the inner route pilotage area, the Whitsunday pilotage area and Hydrographer's Passage. The VTSOs communicate uh, with ships via VHF radio and Imarsat C Imar. The C4I console provides 22 uh, channels that provide coverage for the entire reef area. Please be mindful of the coverage area that VTSOs are monitoring. Uh, when making your call, uh, the VTSO may be taking other calls or completing prior reports. If the operator takes a few minutes to respond, uh, generally they have heard the call and are just completing those prior tasks. Repeated calls from the ship generally interfere with that process, so make your initial call and if you haven't heard back within an appropriate time, uh, please try again. As mentioned, the other way VTSOs communicate with ships is using the MRSAT C for polling and for sending STI and MSI to ships. The VTSO is required to check certain elements for programming uh, with this system, which includes the IMN number and the make and model of the machine. The ship is asked to ensure that the machine is logged into the Pacific Ocean region and then the machine is on and ready to receive emails. Occasionally a pilot will be asked to confirm the details for the address book so that the MRSAT C program can be uh, set up correctly. As per the relevant marine order, pilots are required to report to Reef VTS when either commencing or ceasing duty. We would expect a pilot commencing duty to report to Reef VTS within 30 minutes of commencing that duty. The information we require from the pilot includes the vessel name and call sign, the Great Barrier Reef Marine Park Authority permit number if required and the IMO number. The name of the mandatory reporting point or pilot boarding ground latitude and longitude, which is relevant, the name of the pilot and the seafarer ID of the pilot, and any name of a check or trainee pilot with their seafarer ID. Finally, the time the compulsory pilotage area was entered or left, whichever is applicable. Additionally, a confirmation of the final reporting point, the drafts of the vessel, any defects and dangerous goods that may be on board the vessel, 
and the intended route plan will always help the operator with completing the report successfully. The information received will be placed into a form the VTSO operator uses and this will generate STI. The STI will appear on the screen and this will be checked against the surface picture for accuracy. When the VTSO is happy that the information is accurate, it will be sent to the vessel via MRSAT C. From that point forward, periodic reports will be sent to the ship via MRSAT C. This will include ship's traffic information and maritime safety information that you may encounter over the next four hours. Sometimes the information from pilots we receive can be extensive. It would be appreciated if you could deliver that information at a speed that either allows the operator to write the information down or fill in the forms as it is received. During the ship's transit, there may be alerts triggered that the operator needs to take action on. One of these is the shallow water alert. These shallow water areas or any other alert area are defined as an overlay on the surface picture. If a ship enters one of these areas, the operator will have to respond to that alert. They'll do this by calling the ship and may inquire as to the status of the vessel, if any help can be provided or if an emergency situation exists. When the pilot has finished his duty by exiting the pilotage area, Reef VTS would expect a report within 15 minutes of ceasing that duty. VTS also has regular contact with the Rescue Coordination Centre in Canberra who provide maritime safety information in terms of severe weather warnings, uh, special threats to navigation and naval exercises. The ship can receive these as an Auscoast warning from RCC. Otherwise, the MSI is received by Reef VTS and the operator will then decide what information is relevant to the ships in the area and forward it as MSI with ships traffic information. Well, thank you for watching. I hope the information was relevant, informative and interesting. If you're ever in Townsville, please drop into the centre and say good day and uh, fair weather and calm seas to everyone.